Hello Vanguard, welcome to week three of our summer series on identity. I'm excited to dive into the Word of God today. Today we're going to be talking about how how important it is to know who we are in Christ. Because when we don't know who we are in Christ, there's so many questions that come up. And a big one could be questioning the very calling that God has in our life. And so someone in the Bible who really struggled with this was Moses. And we're going to look at his life and um, a couple of passages and just really walk through um, some of these questions or rather complaints or excuses that Moses had where if we look um, and reflect on our own lives, I bet you we've had some of the same questions or complaints or excuses that Moses has had. And so um, I'm really excited to dive into the word today because I feel like I love I love when um, I love the honesty of the word and just seeing how these people in the word of God, it's it's so relatable, right? The questions that Moses had, the concerns, the excuses. I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I know I've had them. And so I don't know if you have, um, um, but let's let's dive into the word. So if you have your Bibles today, um, let's go to Exodus chapter 3, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 15. And the word of God says this. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over the, to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And this Moses, at this Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am, I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians to bring them up and out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, here it is, when Moses says to God, who am I, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God your father has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you will say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God has said to God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. Now let's jump down to um, chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 1 through 16. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say that the Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out 
and took hold of the snake and it turned into a staff in his hand. This said the Lord is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of the fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Then the Lord said, put your hand in your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak and we took it out. The skin was leprous and become as white as snow. Now put it back into your cloak, he said. So Moses put his hand back into his cloak and when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. Then the Lord said, if they do not believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, um, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? It is not I. Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak, and you will teach, and I will teach you what to say. But Moses again says, Pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses and he said, what about your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know he can speak well. He's already on his way to meet you and he will be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you and it will be as if it were your mouth and as if you were God to him. But take this staff in your hand so you can perform the signs with it. So, um, Pastor Wayne Cordero, um, he's a pastor in Hawaii. He once said, we're all a 10 at something for the kingdom of God. And the sooner we can get in alignment with God, with what God is calling us to do, the better. Because then we can stop fighting our calling and do what the Lord has called us to do. Because let's face it, sometimes it's it's not easy. Sometimes it's scary. Sometimes it's easier said than done. I know, um, you know, but at the same time, I feel like the sense of like Jeremiah, like there's a fire in our bones and we can't deny the calling that God has placed over our life. And in these passages, Moses is really trying to deny and question and make excuses for the calling that God has in his life. And, you know, Pastor Wayne says, we're all a 10 at something. You just got to find what you're a 10 at for the kingdom of God. And, and the sooner you can stop fighting that and get alignment with it, the better, because God can use you in great and mighty ways. Um, but like I said, Moses, he was fighting it. But God, he had a plan, and his plan was to deliver his people, and he wanted to use Moses in that plan. And what was Moses' response? It was a lot of excuses, and it was a lot of complaints because he was doubting who he was and what he was called to do. The very first thing, the very first thing that Moses puts into question is his own identity. In um, chapter 3, verse 11, he says, Who am I? Who am I to go to the Pharaoh? Who am I? It's almost like he didn't even believe in himself. Like he didn't think he had the worth and the value to be called by God. And I love God's response because he tells him, I will be with you in verse 12. I will be with you. And I think back on like even times of doubt in myself and my identity and my calling, even though I've had times to doubt who I am, I can't help but I can't doubt who God is and that he is a miracle working God and, and the goodness in my life. Even in my darkest days, I find peace knowing who God is. And Moses asks, who am I? Who am I that you would use me? Who am I that I can go before Pharaoh? And I love God's response. He's like, you want to know who you are? You are someone so special that I am always with you. You are never alone. Who are you? You are someone worthy of the love of the Father. So it, I, 
I want this to be a reminder to us that if you're questioning who you are, know that you are a child of God. Know that you are someone so important that the Lord is always with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He walks with you. He is with you. The next thing Moses says is, I don't, what if I don't know enough? What if I'm not smart enough? He was afraid that one of the Israelites may ask him a question that he didn't know the answer to. And man, can I relate to that? Sometimes it's like, oh man, if I try and share, you know, uh, the good news with somebody, what if, you know, they ask me something and I don't know how to answer it? Or what if God's calling me to things that I feel like I'm not prepared for? And that fear can really start to hold us back from knowing who we are and what we're called to do. And again, God's response is just so beautiful. You know, he, he says, like, what if I don't know enough? What if they ask me, who is it that sent me? And the Lord says, you tell them that I am that I am is, is who sent you. I am that I am, meaning anything they need me to be, I am. They need a healer, I'm a healer. They're, they need someone to restore them, I'm the restorer. They need someone to, um, you know, speak encouragement into their life, I am that encouragement. I am that I am. I am everything that they need me to be. You tell them that. And he's also telling Moses, you think you're not enough, but I am that I am, and I am with you. So because I am, you are. You are enough. I'm everything you need me to be. I'm everything that they need me to be. And the third thing he says, what if people don't take me seriously? Um, and for one, um, it says it straight up, but I'll read it to you. It says, Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? You know, what if they don't take me seriously? And it gets hard and it, it gets hard not to doubt ourselves and our identity and our calling when other people may laugh at our dreams, or our goals, or, you know, the things that we're called to do. It, it's hard. It's one thing to question ourselves, but when other people question us, it's so hard. And this is something Moses was wrestling with. What if people don't take me seriously? And God had already promised Moses in Exodus 3.18 that the people would in fact listen to him, but Moses wouldn't let up. This was a big insecurity for him. Like, what if people just don't take me seriously? What if they don't believe me? So even though God had already made the promise that the people would listen to him, God tells him in chapter 4 verses through the 2 through 9, he's pretty much like, look, if they don't take you seriously, they will after I use you to do these three great signs that I promised that you would do through me, that Moses would do through the Lord. So he's saying, mm, yeah, if they don't take you seriously, I think a staff turning into a snake and back again, a leprous hand being healed, like these three great signs, the Nile turning into blood, um, I think they're going to take you seriously after that. And so I feel like this is such a beautiful reminder that even if people may doubt our calling or doubt who we are, or even ourselves doubting who we are and doubting our calling, if we are obedient to what God is calling us to do, if we're in alignment to the calling the Lord has, and we allow him to use us in the very way he has called us to do, and as he's directing our steps and directing our path, and we are simply and beautifully doing what God has called us to do, then people will be in awe of how God will use you. And that's not why we do it. We don't do it so the naysayers can be like, whoa, they did have a calling in their life. No, we do it so that lives can be saved, lives can be restored. First seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you, Matthew 6, 33. So when all else fails, if people aren't taking you seriously, do what God has called you to do anyways, and watch how the Lord will use you to bring honor and glory to his name. And the fourth thing, and you know, like I've been saying, I, I think it's safe to say that we may have asked some of these questions or had some of these concerns or excuses, um, but this one I, I can relate to because I, I tend to feel this about myself, but Moses says, I'm no good with words. In 4.10, he says it. He says, um, 
Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past, nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. And I love, I love the Lord's response. Let's read. It's so good. In verse 11 and 12, the Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. Everything that Moses says to the Lord, every excuse, every complaint, the Lord has an answer and a promise for Moses because there is a calling in Moses' life because Moses is a child of God. So, you know, after all these excuses and all these complaints and being met with an answer and a promise, I think for Moses, the truth finally comes out. We finally get a glimpse into his true heart. In 4.13, he says this straight out. But Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. He's basically saying, I don't want to do this. Like, Lord, God, please send someone else, anybody else but me. And so like I said, Moses gave all these complaints all these excuses but god had answers and god had promises so finally we see moses's heart and we see that in reality he didn't want to step out in faith he in that moment he did not want to be obedient to what god had for him he said please send somebody else it, it, it can't be me please god send somebody else moses was questioning his very identity in christ Moses was questioning his value. Moses was questioning his calling. Moses was questioning his intelligence. Moses was questioning his ability to speak. He was questioning the fact that God could use him to do great and mighty signs and wonders and miracles. He was questioning if he wanted to be faithful to this calling, if he wanted to step out in obedience. And see, that's the danger, Vanguard. That's the danger when we doubt who God has called us to be, who God created us to be, when we doubt our identity, that's when, man, the real struggle can happen. When we don't know who we are, we doubt everything about ourselves and we doubt everything about our God and we doubt everything about our calling. We need to know that we are a child of God. Vanguard, you are a child of God. You need to know that God is with you. He loves you so much that he is with you. He is the I am that I am. He is everything that you need him to be. Anything you feel like you lack, God pulls the slack and he fills you and he renews you and he restores you. He equips you to do the things you never thought you would do. He empowers you to do great and mighty things for him. The Lord speaks through you. The Lord moves through you. Vanguard, we need to know exactly who we are to the Lord and in the Lord. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You are a child of God. God loves you and great are the plans that he has for you. And so I encourage you today, step out in faith. Put aside the questions. Put aside the, the excuses, but instead walk in the answers and the promises that God has for your life. Know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that God made you with a plan and a purpose. And yes, the enemy wants to put doubt in your mind. He wants to put ex excuses. He wants to put all these fears in front of you. But God has said, you are my son, you are my daughter, and great are the things I have for you because I am that I am. I am with you. And so, Vanguard, I encourage you, walk in confidence knowing who you are in Christ and watch what the Lord will do through you. I believe that God is still in the business of setting the captives free and that he wants to use you to partner with him and use you as a willing vessel to set the captives free. There's a life out there that is in need of the good news of the Lord. There, there's a family out there that needs the good news of the Lord. So we don't have time to doubt our identity. We don't have time to doubt our calling because there is a life out there that needs you to share the good news of the Lord with them. So Vanguard, 
please know you are a child of God. You are so loved. You're so loved that the Lord walks with you and talks with you, empowers you, and encourages you. Let's set the captives free. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for each student, staff, and faculty. I truly do. God, because you have placed them on this campus for a plan and a purpose, Lord. You are equipping them, Father, for great and mighty things for your kingdom. God, I thank you for God encounters in the dorm rooms, in the chapels, in, in, um, at the beach, in, in the calf, wherever they're at on campus this upcoming year, Lord. I'm so excited for the encounters that are going to take place. And God, I pray that each day, each student, faculty, and staff is on vanguard, that they would just be reminded exactly of who they are in you, God, that they would be reminded of the great and beautiful calling you have over each of their lives, God, the uniqueness of their callings, the diversity of their callings, the, the beauty of their callings, God. I thank you for each and every student and just the worth and the value that they hold. May they know that today. May they be reminded of exactly who they are in Christ. Lord, we thank you for your word and we thank you that you call us to step out to things that maybe we can't even comprehend at the moment. But if we put our trust in you, great are the things that you have for us. We believe it, God. We believe it and we thank you for it, God. Help us, Lord. We love you and we praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Vanguard. I hope you were encouraged. Please know that you are a child of God and he loves you. God bless you. I can't wait to see you on campus. I can't wait to meet the incoming freshmen. And I can't wait to be reunited with our sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Woo -woo. And um, Pastor Mike will finish out our series next Thursday. So stay tuned for that. All right. Love you. God bless you. Let's meet up soon. Get some coffee. Bye.